Hello, my name is Ariel, like the mermaid, and in this video I'm going to talk about a lot of misconceptions people have about gender identity. And the first misconception I want to address is the relationship between a person's childhood and their gender identity. Now, there's a huge misconception that transgender people always, it'll, it'll always be evident in their childhood that they are transgender. And this is certainly not the case because many transgender, in fact most transgender people don't come out in their childhood and many times don't even show any signs of being transgender. But yet there's one of the biggest things that a transgender person often faces when they come out to their friends and family who knew them throughout their childhood is people will be like, Oh, well, I, I knew you as a kid and you always liked boy things. Why, why do you identify as a girl now? And, or, like, you know, I knew you when you were, when you were, you know, a little girl. You always liked wearing dresses and playing with dolls, or, you know. And, and so a lot of people have that misconception that just because someone expressed themselves a certain way when they were younger, that that means that they should identify a certain way when they're older, which is obviously not necessarily the case because people change when they grow up. One reason why I think this misconception exists is because one of the main things when you start searching transgender issues on like the internet or anything like that, one of the main things that comes up is transgender children, really young children that from a very young age identify with a gender that is different from their assigned sex. Now these stories are all really fascinating and very inspiring but they don't necessarily reflect um, most cases of transgender people. Most transgender people don't come out at a really young age, that's very uncommon in fact. Most transgender people will come out in their teens or even maybe in their 30s or in their 50s, in their 80s. There's a lot of variety of when someone will come out as transgender. Now unfortunately this misconception is not just held by a lot of people who are just ignorant of transgender issues, but also there are trans people who have this misconception and gender therapists who even have this misconception. A lot of times if you go into therapy for gender dysphoria, a lot of times the questions they'll start asking you are about, oh well, when you were a child, did you like to play with dolls or did you like to do sports or, you know, things like that. And in reality, um, it's really not very relevant, you know, what you did when you were a kid. Because what matters is not what you did when you were seven, it matters right now how you feel about your gender. And so I would say to a lot of trans people, if, if you have a gender therapist who's talking a lot about, you know, what, asking you a lot of questions about your childhood and focusing a bit too much on that, I would, that might be a sign that they might not be the right person to be seeing about your gender issues. Think about it this way. If someone identifies as a cisgender male, if in their childhood they happen to like wearing dresses or like putting on makeup or like playing with dolls, we wouldn't suddenly go up to that person and go like, hey, well, when, when you were a kid, you liked, to, you liked to play, do girl things, so that means that you should identify as a woman. And the same thing, you know, if, if uh, you know, someone who identifies as a cisgender woman, you know, if we found out that she likes, liked, you know, dressed up as a boy and, you know, presented herself really masculine when she was a child, we wouldn't suddenly go like, oh, well, you, you should be a boy now. So the same thing applies to transgender people. Uh, the standards should be absolutely the same, which is that it doesn't matter what you, how you expressed yourself as a child, it matters how you express yourself now. Another misconception, uh, what you wear. What you wear does not define your gender identity. You can present yourself in a way that is more considered feminine. You could be um, a cisgender male and still, you know, and identify that way, but still like wear a dress and put on makeup. It doesn't matter. That it doesn't change what you consider yourself. And same thing, vice versa. Um, you, what you wear, how you present yourself does not determine your gender identity, your artistic preferences, what TV shows you like, what musical artists you like, 
what movies you like. That doesn't determine your gender identity. The people you hang out with, you know, if you hang out with mostly males, that doesn't make you a male. If you uh, hang out with mostly females, that doesn't make you more female. It, it doesn't matter in terms of your gender identity. Another big problematic thing that people will do is that people will assume your sexuality based on your gender identity. But you can be, you can identify as female, but be attracted to females, or be attracted to males, or be attracted to both, and vice versa. You can identify as male and be attracted to, to males, and be attracted to females, and be attracted to both. Your gender identity and your sexuality are two different things, and so your sexuality shouldn't define your gender identity. Another aspect of gender identity that a lot of people have misconceptions about are about gender identity and how it relates to transitioning for transgender people. Now, transition can mean a lot of different things for different transgender people. For some people, it might just be changing the way one dresses, or it might be changing some of their mannerisms, or changing their voice a little bit. Um, or it could mean actually going through physical changes, like hormone replacement therapy or sexual reassignment surgery. But um, no matter what physical uh, transitions a person go through, it doesn't mean that they are more that gender than someone who doesn't go through certain physical changes. If someone does something physically to change their body, that does not make them more that gender. They were that gender before they did anything to their body. They, did that, they were that gender as soon as they identified as that gender. There are a lot of problematic ways that people speak in referring to transgender people. And uh, one of them is that um, they will kind of, when they're talking about a person before they transitioned, they will switch to their, um, the tr gender pronouns that they used before and maybe their original name or etc. And that's very problematic because it's not like someone just because they transition, it's not like they, like, were this person, then poof, they became like a new magic, but they were always that person, they just weren't open about their gender identity, they hadn't, um, it, they didn't discover their gender identity, but they still, you should always, when you're referring to someone, you should always use their preferred pronouns, and their uh, preferred gender identity, and their preferred name when referring to them.